Hey guys, Mr. Here again for another video today, and we are back with our Houston Vikings franchise mode. And I just want to say sorry about the few short day break there uh, with no uploads. I was at a hockey tournament, and it was an away hockey tournament. Um, so yeah, my bad about that, guys. Uh, wasn't able to prepare any uploads before, or I had a time. I did not have a, any time to do it at, at all. So, uh, yeah, sorry about that, guys, but it happens, and I just completely forgot to mention it um, in my episodes. I think it was Thursday as well for some reason, but we're back, and that's all that really matters. So, in this one, we have the Western Conference Finals against the Edmonton Oilers, which should be interesting. We are currently 8-2, and two, and Edmonton has a record of 8-6. and six. Now, uh, let's go and check out their team we do have home ice advantage throughout this um throughout this series uh so let's go the check the lines for uh for the oilers and we'll see how good they are looking must be pretty good making it to the conference finals and yeah okay so uh tobias raider they've got two germans on the team why aren't they playing together Jeff Buckley, get on that top line. Uh, all right, so Tobias Reader, holy shit. Oh, he's actually a point-per-game player. Oh, my God, Tob Tobias Reader's actually unreal in the playoffs. He had, tw he had 10 goals uh, back in the 2022-2023 playoffs, in, and that was in 21 games. Holy shit, he's done good. Damn, get in the play get him in the playoffs, boys. McDavid not doing anywhere near as good as Reader. He didn't have a great season though either. He only had sixty seven points in the eighty two games. That's not very good. Uh wow, Jesus, he did great last year and uh three or four years ago as well. And like five or six years ago. So uh very interesting. Uh but yeah, it's currently only nine points for McDavid and Pugliarvi with eight. And on their second line, they have Jeff Buckley with four points, Drysaddle with 14 points, absolute beast, and Kyle Palmieri with six points, although five of them being goals. On their third line, they have Tyler Benson with three points, Gabriel Clancy with six points, and Dmitry Timoshov with two points, a former Houston legend back in NHL 17. And then on the fourth line, Oscar Lindblom uh, with five points, Cole Domi with four points, and Sergei Mironov, or Mironov, Miron, Miror, Mironov, yeah, Mironov, <laughs> sure, <laughs> um, yeah, on that fourth line right wing with two goals. Now, I want to see contracts here. McDavid's getting paid $12.27 million at five, Dry settled 9.3. Uh, for the next two, Pugliarvi ends this year. Reader's pretty expensive, so is Buckley. Palmieri's not too bad. Benson is pretty expensive. Clancy's pretty damn expensive, and that's a long-term contract, too. Uh, other than that, pretty cheap deals uh, defensive, or Well, pretty cheap deals depth-wise, uh, depth at least. So let's go check out their defense. They have Minnesota's uh, Jonas Brodine, although we might have traded... Uh, Jonas Brodeen to them because I'm pretty positive I did take him in the expansion. So Brodeen with Larson. Um, that's a good top two, really. Um, yeah, Larson has eight points, so looks to be like their best defenseman. Nathan Beaulieu a minus eight, and then Brett Pesci a minus five. That is not very good. Then Trent Turner and Tony Petnin. So, guys, their bottom four really are not good, but their top two is good and then they have john gibson in that with a 932 save percentage which is obviously really good and a 1.9 gaa and uh the backup is ronald inglis so interesting yeah we'll see how this team does scratch players clef bomb is out right now uh wow he's been out for a while too since 61 games yeah he hasn't played yet this season uh, and then also Almond was there. Might have been one of our players as well, to be honest, because we did have a low elite player that was, uh, or did have a name with Almond in it, or Almond was his last name, I should say. So maybe that is that. But 
let's, uh, I mean, we might as well just get into the series and we'll see how this goes. So, game number one, now time, uh, to start the sim. Game number one in Houston, let's see how it goes. First period, uh, 0-0 zero, zero after the first 20 minutes of this series. Shots 9-7 to seven in favor of us, and we head to the second, tied at 0 Second period now, and there are some goals. Julius Honka and Ken Benson make it 2-0. Um, all of these goals came in the last half of the second period. And then Clancy, I don't remember his first name, to be honest, scored to cut the, our lead in half. And we head to the third, up by one. Also, quite an advantage in the shots. 21-14 uh, to 14 for us. We'll slow sim the third. And Ken Benson gets at the third goal. Uh, for us this game. Who was it? It was Ken Benson in the, in the uh, second period as well, but then Jesse Pugliarvi scores from the wrong side of center ice to make it a one-goal game, but Pekka Marketing gives us that two-goal lead back once again, and we should win game number one. There we go. 4-2 win. Only 22 shots for Edmonton, but if they score a goal every 11 shots, then that should be interesting. Benson with the two-goal performance, Honka with a goal, and then Nicholas with two assists. So, uh, pretty good game, I would say, from us. Uh, obviously, no offense in the first period, which is kind of surprising. But um, the second and third was jam-packed with goals, especially Pooley Harvey uh, scoring from the other side of center ice, which is just unfortunate, really. Of course, it would happen to Lukanen right now. Um yeah, yeah. So wait, uh, do we? Uh, no, yeah. We have Lukanen, right? It's Gustafson who got injured as we're going to the playoffs, right? Just making sure. Yes, okay. So, um, I mean, his stats still going up. Hopefully, they will continue to uh, move up. We, we, we will see. Now, let's go. Game number two, again, obviously, in Houston. And, uh, yeah, let's get right into it. First period. All right, so not great. Very poor third, uh, or very poor third, very poor last three minutes of the first period. That's what I was trying to say. I wasn't trying to say third. Um, so, yeah, that's not great. Miranov and Limblom scoring, uh, and it is 2 nothing for Edmonton after one. And not looking too good for Houston. We're also getting outshot 12-8. All right, second period now. No goals allowed in the second by either goalie. And the shots are now 21-16 to 16 in favor of Edmonton. Not looking good for Houston, although we have an early power play in the third, which we were not able to do anything with. There's our 20th shot as well. We're coming back on the power play we score. We still had a power play after that too. And it is now a one-goal game with eight minutes to go. Will we be able to do this? We're now leading in shots as well. We poured on in the third period, but Gibson shuts the door, and the Oilers win one uh, away from their ice, which really helps them out, that's for sure. Um, yeah, okay, so that's interesting. That's kind of unfortunate, I'm not going to lie. So we then go to game number three now, up, um, uh, up what is it? Oh, no, sorry, tied 1-1 in the series hopefully this goes well uh we'll see we'll see um all right let's go game number three now i'm just gonna jump right into it don't have much to say right now i also just woke up from a nap so yeah let's uh <laughs> let's get into this first period of game three this time now in edmonton how do we do eh, not great well that's not true we had a lot of shots that period but uh, after the first 20, we're trailing, and our captain, Connor McDavid, scores to make it 1-0. Uh, but at the end of the first, yeah, so shots are also 12-11 to 11 in favor of Edmonton right now. Um, yeah, you know what? To be fair, a pretty even period. Second period, though, now we need to get a goal, and we are not able to do it. And that top line gets another goal. Toby Reader makes it 2 nothing, and wow, we dominated them in that period. They had six shots, and they scored on one, but Gibson so far with 26 saves on 26 shots. Now time for the third period, 
which we will slow sim, but again, trailing by two, heading into the third. If we can't figure out how to solve Gibson, this could be a very rough series for us. We had a power play opportunity, which we weren't all able to score on, and we come down to the last five minutes, although Trojanovic brings us within one. We still have time. Three minutes, two minutes, please, someone on Houston. No. All right, so another 2-1 game, and it really wasn't close. Gibson with a 973 save percentage. Eesh. <laughs> yeah, and Louis Supre has now been injured as well. I didn't see for how long that was, to be honest. Uh, I probably should have checked that out. Who are we going to put in, though? Uh, Nobles? Yeah, we should put in Nobles. All right, so those will be the lines. He can take face offs, I believe, right? No, not really. Well, we're just going to keep him uh, keep him there anyway. So we've now lost two straight games, both games being to a score of 2-1. to one. And Edmonton now also has the 2-1 series lead. Let's go and sim game number four. And uh, we'll see how this goes. First period, 1-1. Uh, one, one. McDavid again with the opening goal of the game. And then Honka with his second goal of the series to tie the game. We're out shooting them 11-10, to 10, which isn't bad. Isn't that bad. Um, yeah, so good first period, I would say. I'm glad we do leave tied instead of trailing again. But, uh, yeah, this is, the pro this is what we really need. We need to get a goal on Gibson somewhat early so then he's uh, less confident in himself. Whether that actually matters or not, uh, in this game, probably not, but whatever. <laughs> Second period now. All right, Becca Markkinen and Darren Nicholas makes it 3-1. Shots are now 24-19 in favor of us as well. So that was a pretty damn good second period, if you ask me. We had 13 shots while they only had... Uh, nine, I believe. It was either nine or seven. Uh, so, yeah, not bad. Uh, time for the third period now, which, of course, we will slow sim, and Curtis David gets his first of the series because he definitely slowed down in the first three games of this series since the last three games of the last series to make it 4-1, but Palmieri, with just under 14 minutes left, makes it a two-goal game. Edmonton had a power play opportunity, which they were not able to convert on, and then we come down to the final five minutes of the third and looking like for oh okay Curtis David with the empty netter I was gonna say looking like for some reason each team can only win by a certain score line because we would have won four two there um, Nicholas with three points and three hits David with three points and Honka with two points uh, but yeah so like I was gonna say if uh, we had a one with ah ah ha uh no <laughs> it's may 19th and he's out till june 5th lucanen has been injured and we now have to rely on um stu was it stu steckel i don't even remember um uh, shannon steckel sorry he didn't have a bad game this seat or this season in the playoffs and he had to play a bit last year too Hopefully he'll be good again. Oh, man, if he can play like he did last season, I think we could definitely get by this team. But it's a completely different goaltender, which they definitely do not know near as well. So we'll see how this goes. Um, yeah, okay, well, let's go edit lines now. Yeah, that one sucks. I'm not going to lie. That one really stings in the foot. Uh, yeah, I just made that joke, even though... Um, uh, even though Lukanen just got a bruised foot. So our new starting goaltender will be Shannon Steckel, and the backup goalie will be Benjamin Vallette. Um, yeah, down in the AHL, I'm just going to do best lines. I'm not that worried about it right now, especially since they aren't actually playing. But 2-2 series tied now. Comes down to a best of three, but uh, for the rest of the conference final and... Say we do make it to the Stanley Cup final. Um, who knows? Who knows if we'll be able to have Lukanen back uh, this season or not. That is June 5th, right? I almost just simmed that day. Yeah, okay, so that's June 5th. So we'll see. I don't know. It's it's a possibility, but we'll see. Like I said, let's see. How's Toronto and the Islanders? Nothing's happening. Can you change, please? I'm trying to use my right stick. Here, wait. 
usually when I do that, my controller starts to work pretty fine again. No? Okay. Can I see the other uh, conference, please? Can I see how the Eastern Conference is doing? No? Alright, it's just not going to change. Well, let's get into this now. Best of three series. And we'll see how this goes. First period with now Steckel in net. Uh, let's see how it goes. First period of game five. Uh, we're up 2-1. Not bad. Oh, we should have been up 2-0. That's a rough one, not going to lie. Darren Nicholas scored uh, relatively early to give us the one goal lead. Then Franklin Gorin made it 2 nothing, But with 15 seconds left, Reader continues his absolutely tremendous playoff performance. Scoring uh, with 15 seconds left in the first. And uh, brings them within one heading into the second period. Shots are 11-7 to in favor of us. And uh, yeah, like I said, 2-1 already. You guys can see that. Uh, let's go second period now, and again, another three-goal period, but we're getting two of the goals, and they got one, so Nobles actually with two, wow, imagine if I hadn't have put him in, imagine if uh, Super A hadn't got injured, we'd be or we'd be tied 2-2 right now, crazy how that, how that happens, uh, so yeah, Nobles uh, really early into the second period gave us the uh, 3-1 lead, and then Nobles again re really late, or well, a lot later in the period though, made it 4-1, uh, four sorry, I was going to say 4-2, then Tyler Benson makes it 4-2, uh, like 44 seconds after Nobles scored, and I just realized Edmonton actually only has 11 shots right now, so Steckel really isn't that, or isn't really isn't doing that great, but we're holding them to a very minimal amount of shots, which is definitely helping us now. We are shooting them by a lot, but we will head into the third, and it is 5-2 now. Curtis David with his third goal in the last two games, so that's not bad at all. Now we have a power play chance as well. Edmonton's getting a decent amount of shots this period as well. They're about to double their shots, and Toby Reeder gets another goal, man. He is unstoppable, and then I believe it's Boris, Boris Trubarov. Gave us the empty netter, and we scored six goals on 29 shots. So Noble's the first star with two goals. Gorin with a goal and two assists, and then Markin with three assists. So that's our depth. I believe Gorin isn't even on the third line. I'm pretty sure he's on the fourth line. Although, don't quote me on that. He might be on the third line. Is he? No, yeah, he's on the fourth line. So he just did good that game, really. Uh, very interesting. And um, Noble's has four points in... How many games? In two games. Wow, yeah, okay, good for Nobles then. Markkinen, he just had a three-assist game, so that's not bad. I'm not even going to check the rest of those stats. Um, but there we go. So we now sim to game number six, up 3-2 in the series. Now, can I see the Eastern Conference? There we go. Toronto is up 3-2. Imagine if we meet in the final again. Yeah, that would be, that would be quite something. Let's go though. Game number six for the Edmonton Oil or for the Edmonton Oilers uh, to hope that they uh, tie the series and force a game seven. Will they be able to? Let's see. First period, um, not looking too great on either side. Although to be fair, there was a lot of shots. A combined 22 shots. Um, but yeah, yeah. After the first, no goals allowed, and shots are 12 to 10 in favor of Edmonton. Now, uh, those Edmonton fans, they're loud. We need to uh, we need to make sure that we uh, pressure and continuously pressure and hopefully get uh, some goals in this second period. Speaking of second period, and Dreisaitl scores the only goal of the game so far, and it is 1-0 in favor of the Oilers. Now, Steckel's doing pretty damn decent. Only let in one goal and 22 shots. Now uh, it's time. For, it's clutch time. We need Curtis David to really play like he did the last few games of the last series. That would be amazing. Shots 22 to 19 in favor of Edmonton, but it is time to slow sim the third, and we are only 15 minutes away from the Oilers forcing a game seven, which I really not for. I'm just not for at all. We're down in the last half of the third as well, still trailing by only one goal. Three minutes, and Curtis David, who did I say had to do it, gets us the goal of power play for the Oilers, but they were not able to 
convert on it. Are they still on the power play heading into overtime? Yes, they are. For the first 24 seconds of overtime, they will be on the power play. But, Steckle buddy, you are doing great. You have 30 saves right now. Both goalies doing fantastic. And the very first overtime period of this series... <laughs> Uh, let's see. How does it go? Come on, boys. Let's get the dub. Power play. Yeah, that was the power play. Now we have a power play. Come on, boys. Damn it. Jonas Brodeen, who I'm not sure if we did, but you guys should go check and see if we did take Brodeen. But, I mean, Steckle did great. He, ju he just did. Dreisaitl with a goal and an assist that game. So he's uh, he's doing good as well, which obviously I like to see because Dreisaitl's... Uh, if not my favorite, he's definitely tied favorite player. So that one kind of sucks, not going to lie. But it is now time for Game 7, which, yeah, we need to win. And Toronto, <laughs> they're moving on to the final. Uh, let's see, Game number 7 now. Let's go simulate it. I think we're going to slow sim all three periods just to uh just to see so we'll uh, we'll do that now we'll start it off get right into it power play very early for edmonton and clancy on the power play scores on i think only their second or third shot of the game and steckle is not doing good so far he let in two goals and i think it was four shots and we are down to nothing heading into the second period uh, shots are now 12 to 7 in favor of us, but does that really matter if we can't score? We need to get a goal by Gibson now, and we need to be down by only one, or we need to be leading or tied heading into the third. We need a goal, boys. Come on, Houston. I know you can do it on home ice. Feed off the energy of the fans and get one by Gibson, please. Ten minutes left, but Terry Yoshimura before it wasn't even or before it was even ten minutes left brings us within one, which is obviously really good. Now three minutes left of the second and Kyle Palmieri scores to make it three one and we head to the third, trailing by two. Not good. Not good at all. Are we going to get eliminated? Will we come back for a repeat? Uh, or a repeat of uh, last year's Daily Cup final. Let's see. We will slow sim the period. We need a goal now if we want to get back into this game. Obviously, there's plenty of time left. And Barry Gibson with the goal. But Tyler Benson, oh, my God. Every time we come within one, they just get another goal. And it's a great equalization. And Benson with the second of the game and it'll it will be an all Canadian final for the cup this season. Damn it. Ah uh, Edmonton was the first team we really struggled with. And I wanna say, I mean I'm not blaming it on Steckel, but I wanna say if we had have had uh Luke in and that I feel like we most definitely could have uh could have moved on. Um Steckel, how did he do? Terrible. Oh, no. Oh, those stats are terrible. Oh. <laughs> Why didn't they put Valette in? They should have put Valette in. Oh. After Steckel let in two goals on four or five shots, whatever it was, they should have put Valette in. Oh, man, that really sucks. I'm not going to lie. And, uh, unfortunately, Edmonton and Toronto in the cup final this season. Let's sim to the draft. Now, I'm not going to do the draft in this episode, but I am going to look at the playoff stats and the trophies in this episode really quickly after we do this. Um, and, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's Luke getting in back from his injury. Damn it, man. That seriously sucks. Uh, I was really hoping we were able to move on, but unfortunately we weren't. And uh, hopefully Toronto, they do. Hopefully Toronto wins because and Toronto's my team. 
That's why I said hopefully Toronto wins instead of the team that beat us to move on. Louis Supre is now back from his injury as well. And uh, that is the draft lottery, which I'm not too worried about as of right now. Draft is for the next episode. I could seriously care less about the draft right now. Uh, We shouldn't have anybody retiring, which we do not. Let's go check the entire league, though, because we're pretty far into the sim. There's bound to be a few names we know out here. Rask, Anderson, Talbot, Mason, and Oming. Talbot is a 73 overall. Wow, okay. Um, let's go check uh, skaters. Phil Kessel, 77 overall, 39 years old. Pacioretty in the 1,000-point club. Absolute beast. He almost had 500 goals, too. Uh, Doughty, three points shy of 1,000. Ugh. That's terrible. I would have played another season if I was three points shy. Wheeler as well. I mean, he's a 71 overall, but come on. He could have got seven points in a season. Uh, Everly, though, 69 overall. He had a great career, too. Roman Yossi, 37 retiring. Shen on a, on the Vegas Golden Knights. Simmons and Foligno, free agents. Evander Kane, John Carlson, Josh Bailey, TJ Brody, Colin Wilson, Tatar, Vatnin, Don Skoy, Smith Pelly. All right, well, uh, yeah, that's that was uh, a pretty big uh, retiring class, that's for sure. Let's go and check out the stats, and we will check out the trophies as well. So Ken Benson led our team in points with 18 in the 17 games. Um, Curtis David with 17 points in uh, 17 games, and then Nicholas also 17 points in 17 games. So that top line did really good throughout the playoffs. Uh, Gibson really slowed down in that series. That's unfortunate because I think he only got one or two points uh, that entire series. Nickerson, I'm pretty positive, didn't get a single point in that series. Honka definitely got better in that series. Yoshimura really slowed down from, like, the first series. I, I wish he could have continued his dominance. I mean, our second line still did great. Well, still did good. But, um, yeah, most goals definitely went to David, right? Yeah. Uh, let's go check goalies. We'll see. Lukanen, the 925 under 2.16 in 14 games. He was 9-4-0. and and then Stackle, 4-2 at home with an 8-8-7 save percentage and a 2.98 GAA. I don't want to look at that. Now, I just want to look at skaters. I want to see who had the most goals throughout the playoffs. Oh, was it Curtis David, or did someone have more? Toby Reeder, maybe. Marner, 14 goals. And Dave McDavid, not David, McDavid. He had um, 12 goals as well. Sabinajad uh, on Toronto. They did play five more games than us. And, uh, wow, the Oilers played 10 more games than us, so they must have been tired. Uh, But, yeah, Curtis David with 11 goals, tied for third. Uh, I'm surprised Reeder didn't have more goals than that. He scored a quack ton against us. Absolutely unreal. Let's go check this. So, yeah, Toronto, the uh, Stanley Cup champions two years in a row. I want to see that in real life. Presidents went to Vancouver, so continuing to stay in the West for at least a minimum of five seasons in a row. The uh, President's Trophy has gone to a Western Conference team. Uh, wow, Edmonton, then wow, Edmonton, then Winnipeg, then Edmonton, then Houston, then Edmonton for the final. In the last three seasons, Edmonton won it. Uh, or since Edmonton has made it to the final every year, except for this year, they ma- or they won the cup. So interesting. Toronto, obviously. The Prince of Wales Trophy winners the last two seasons. Art Ross went to Nikita Kucherov. Hart also went to Kucherov. Norris went to Morgan Riley. Kucherov with the Lady Bing. Calder to Gregoire. I have seen that guy. Consmite to Korolyak again. Absolute beast. Uh, Eric Comrie with the Vesna. Um, Stolars and Hellebuck took home the Jennings. Marta Kynan took home the Bill Masterton. Ken Benson with the Selkie. Nice. I believe that is his first trophy. And Kucherov with the Ted Lindsay and Kucherov with the Maurice Richard. He took home some hardware. He took home five, was it? Wait, one, two, three, um, four, five. Yeah, he took home five trophies this year. So what a beast he was. 
Uh, but yeah, guys, that is going to be it from me in this episode. That was a really long episode. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you all did enjoy, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.